sets with Sephiroth game one. Uh, it doesn't look like he's had much success with the Sephiroth. So we'll see if that continues here in winter semis against Jake. But... I actually like the Sephiroth pick here because the Sephiroth does a few things. One, plenty of range. So you have the ability to put pressure on him. Two, mm -hmm. that right there, that side B, every time it's on Jake, Jake has to consider, do I go for a stall or do I go in? And most of the time, you're probably going to want to go in because you want to back off Sephiroth, put him off stage maybe. That way you can get your resource management set up and that's going to work pretty well for Sharp if you consistently can punish him. Also, Sharp is going to be looking for these mine cards off the top of the platform all the time. And that's something I have a question that has been answered. I didn't know if F tilt would hit through the uh, the blocks and that was just shown. Oh yeah, that sword is so huge. So it makes sense like that it totally would. Yeah, Masamune wanted a... <laughs> Look, let's be real. I, I, I have always wanted Sephiroth in this game. I never thought it would actually happen because of this range that this sword has. And it's just <laughs> proven well here in this matchup. You know, something's got to come out to take out Enderman. You know, it might be Sephiroth, the final boss. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you would think Enderman would work for Sephiroth, right? But this one's rebellious. He's like, nope. Mm, no, no, oh, that episode's gonna not do it yet. Once again, also, I just realized this music is not necessarily fitting the tone of the current stakes at hand in this matchup. <laughs> well, I don't know. Is it though? Because this is just game one of what what is the best of five. So this is a little bit too you cheerful, know? though. One's a world ender. The other one might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ender of Dreams more like is uh, would be the other one I think. But okay, wow, great start for Jake on Sharp's second stock. And like I was saying, like you know, typically in this tournament, at least in this tournament, Sharp's Sephiroth has not been successful in game one. Hey, that's that's pretty incredible too. Like Sharp is oh there you go, finally finds the dash attack. Sharp is like the king of online random. He's just so good at understanding so many different characters and their tactics and how to win. So like it probably takes a bit to get used to each one but the fact that he's able to adjust so fast is crazy i am still yeah. thoroughly impressed by jake's gameplay though because he's getting out range and still finds his moments to get in and get massive punishes oh for sure and like look at this sharp still sitting in a deficit and having to chase enderman around where you know enderman's throwing carts and then immediately following up with axes and swords to cover your your jump like that's, that's gotta be difficult yeah, right there too. When you're at a percent window like that, you can be you can afford to trade. Like, let me stay within range. Uh, the frame data isn't necessarily the best on all of Sephiroth's moves, so I can get my back air out and get that KO before they can actually hit me. But this is really good for Sharp. If Sharp could find a ledge trap, maybe find a nice stock right here with down smash or drop low with the back air. Not gonna get it, but he's trying to find one right here. He can get this game even. All right, all right a couple of up tilts and chasing with up airs. Jake is on the hunt once again. But Sharp just continues to snap his fingers at Jake. I like that. I like that a lot. Every time Sharp has, like, he, when he's forced to jump, he's usually tried to challenge the follow-up afterwards. So at that point, finally waited for the air dodge because he knew Jake was understanding. He's always swinging and caught him with the up smash. All right. Here we go. Jake mining up some minerals, trying to get the, trying to get his next diamond. Yeah, yeah, even the gold right now would be really good here on stock three. Like, if you can't get to that diamond, at least the gold will help a lot right now. Because it's got the KO power. It, it has the ability to box with it. Like, he still has diamond on deck, but he's just trying to make sure that resource is going to be there when that one goes away. Ah, oh, God, mining cart is so strong. That's right. Of course, one wing. Oh, dear. Here, and, yep, <laughs> hit him with the dynamite. Yeah, Octo Slash may be amazing. It don't mean a damn thing to explosives, though. That TNT at the ledge, you hit it, or you happen to activate the the switch you're done for it's such a huge hitbox and that was really well played by jake in game one yeah but now you know now that we're in best of fives does sharp actually stick it out with sephiroth for another game or do the sharp change to uh when i could see it but on a wider stage i i, I could see it but on a wider stage just because uh, like what sharp wanted to do there was kind of just like box him into a corner it control him on platforms. Didn't work though because Steve is really good at that on Battlefield. You can utilize the, uh, the minecart, or you can switch to Corn. This Corn has showed up a lot lately. Actually, he pulled it out against Meister a few times because he's trying to make that matchup work there, and it's uh it's been really really leveling up. So this is another burst character that you could use with that disjoint from that side B, or just the frame trap ability for that sword to to just make it so Jake can't chill. Oh, definitely, especially like after the update and the. <laughs> I'd say the upgrades that 
that Corrin got the, the uh, very necessary upgrades. <laughs> oh, very necessary for sure. But it actually like put him back to a, uh, its former self, where some of those combos that were in the previous game uh, actually work again. Yeah, and th there we go again. That's an even harder punish through uh, those hitboxes. So that's that's another thing that Jake has to respect. But like this character's always had like multi like such good aerial frame traps it's so good at keeping people from landing on the ground the only thing they really lost which is the key factor is you just can't win neutral by hitting insta snap side b every single time anymore that's true i mean you still got the side b but it's not a it's not instant win for sure that game, that game won <laughs> that thing won games by itself <laughs> trying to react to that thing it was a ko option it was safe and that minecart is so strong look even though jake has been getting smacked around quite a bit at the start look how easy it is for him to just rack that damage back up okay here's the back throw and we see we can try spacing for the back air nope all right i think he was going for it but oh very interesting the kick from the pin actually went through the cart yeah, the active hitbox on that seems like it's long enough to be able to trade by that, so that's really good. It, oh, yeah, Jake setting up for the grab to get a go for up throw. Not going to kill just yet, but another one should do it. Speaking of up throws, though, it, Shark also has a throw available to him some point soon. Uh, not anymore, though. Goodbye. Yeah, gotta remember that kick. Not as safe on shield as it used to be. Still, still a good tool, but just not as, not as safe. Oh, another oh, pin, go. the kick is it's coming it's in. Like, like you said, not as safe, but still a good kill option. Yep, and sure. finally finds it right there. God, Steve hits so hard. It's just like, you, you look at the hitboxes of all the Minecraft crew. It's like, it just looks so goofy half the time, but they do so much damage. <laughs> it looks like they shouldn't be hitting like for 20s, but they definitely are. <laughs> yeah, like why are they putting up a stack every time they get an up tilt? Like, I, I don't understand. And nobody, nobody nobody, should have that with this type of design, but there's that minecart. It's so strong. It covers so much. This is why I don't like fighting Steve on Battlefield. And I definitely like, I like the fact that Corrin is here on Battlefield, but it just makes it so easy for Steve to pressure you on so many different routes. For sure, for sure. And okay, getting the forward air, but unable to really follow up. Like we see Sharp spacing out these forward airs, but not not being able to convert into bigger damage is really holding Sharp back. Yeah, and it, that, that's really a big pain. Like, look how often Sharp like gets in, right? And I was talking uh, about all those frame traps before. The thing is, though, you gotta land a hit to make them happen. It's just it's like Jake is just putting out pretty decent frame data. He's getting away with these anvils all the time. I, it, I mean, the minecart's a different story. That thing's just who who approved a projectile command grab? That's what I, I need that answer. <laughs> yeah, with intern at Nintendo thought this was okay. <laughs> It's the same person who approved Crump's F tilt. That's that's who. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, we got a lot of positive feedback on Crump's F tilt. Come back. Okay, oh, there I, we go. Big there, hit. I love that move so much. I go for it a little bit too often when I ever randomly get this character. But that is such a good check to spot dodges. It is a great KO option. But at 110, I mean, it's best of five. Sharp yep. has time to work with it. But this is not looking too good because it's going to game number not three yet. <laughs> Not yet, not just yet, but you know, okay, the explosion getting the block, but I want I don't know if he notices Ajax, but as soon as Jake came off the platform, first thing he did, he made the diamond. He put diamond on all his tools. Yep, diamond on deck gets the KO power. You could pretty much at this point too, because you're at 30%, you could afford to trade a lot. So you're gonna see a lot more of these back airs. You're gonna see center stage forward smashes. Well that time go for the back air. But like it's all in your favor. Every single hit that like Sharp can do won't kill you. So it's perfectly fine to trade. That up throw not gonna do it yet, but another one will. Okay, and getting caught with the up air, Jake just continue to fish for his kill. Yeah, you see right there, he's just what just swinging. It's like look, I've grabbed him a few times now. He's probably not gonna stay in shield. And I'm still at 39. So anything he could do outside of throwing me off stage is irrelevant. That's true. Okay, there's the nair into a back here. We finally see Sharp putting out some numbers of smash planks. Oh, all right, whip grab, but are these whip grabs or are they just baits for Sharp to come a little bit closer? All right, nope, not anymore. I was about to say, this is actually starting to get into stressful territory for Jake because even though Sharp's at 200%, if Sharp finds a sweet spot forward smash at the ledge, that actually could kill really early. So that was getting a little bit stressful there, but going up 2 0 with the plethora of characters that Sharp has. Where do you think we're going here with this game number three? Do you think he sticks? Do you think he switches it up? Oh, he switches, definitely. And uh, if history has been any indicator of which way he's going to go, uh, well, we actually can't look at that. But my guess is uh, 
I, I say we, we can look at it because we can see like the character history for this player, but it's mm. been different every single game. One game, he went Zero Suit. The other game, he went Joker. Honestly, my money's on Joker. But My money's on Zero Suit. Uh, my money's I, on <laughs> Oh, all right, you, all right, you you got it. I owe you five dollars. You know, yeah. I was gonna. You know, I was gonna say. I I was gonna say offline. I could see the Joker because the Joker will pressure easier. Online, I feel like the combos and everything are a little bit more difficult. But we're actually running it to FD. That's actually pretty interesting. I assumed it would still have a platform of some kind because we already see here at the start. It makes all of Joker's options linear. He has to approach by a jump. He, it, like that's his main commitment. He has to do now. Yeah, but I think you know what it was that Sharp was really probably getting hit by the cart from the ledges or from the platforms just a little bit too much. So oh, I just want sure. to eliminate it. Let's just have a standard game, really no uh, stage interactions whatsoever, just a flat stage and just me and you. Yeah, that like the trade off you get with FD going with Steve here is that, yeah, you eliminate those platform uh, like routes that you can take with it, but you get put a wall instead. However, you know, Sharp is doing what he needs to do. If you prevent Jake from getting like reset up and being able to force you to jump, Ooh. you get in all the time with Joker. So this is actually looking pretty good so far. Yeah, honestly, I'm not too worried about the wall coming into play against Joker uh, because I don't know if you saw it a little bit earlier. No. Oh, Drag down, down smash. Of course. Actually, he missed the drag down, but he got the air dodge <laughs> out of it anyway. So. Okay. You know what? <laughs> it, dealer's choice. <laughs> I was about to say like that. That's what it was. Uh, that that was gonna be an unfortunate situation where, you know, you missed the combo because you're a little bit off timing. But hey, if they give it you to know, you, you, you take yeah, it. Yeah, you get you you earned you quote earned it. <laughs> so there's a down <laughs> or the the back air into an up smash. But what I was saying about the wall is I don't think the wall is actually gonna come into play too much because, uh, J Sharp has already shown that. The guns is enough to break the wall. Yeah, honestly, you you your point has been proven for sure because at first I like it was it was definitely in Jake's favor with the way he was making approach by jumps, and that's what you need to do. But since then, Sharp has completely like look, this is a pretty was sick. basic <laughs> option. I'm I'm not dealing with it. That's also that was a really good mix up. Like so, start breaking some ankles, only 39% taken, and these air guns are actually putting on a decent amount of pressure. Yeah, like you, you're giving Jake a little bit of time to, to give his resources, but at the same time, you are approaching so safe with guns. And now look at that, Aha, that damage is just gonna build higher and higher, putting Sharp even further in the lead. And now, here it is. The summon, the man himself, Arson, is on deck. 53% with Sharp still. Oh man, the, the boy who always has your back at the bar. Arsene always there for Joker whenever he needs him at the right minute, whenever he needs to get him. And honestly, it's just that KO burst option. Yeah, you got Diamond as well, so you always have the consistent KOs. But you see Jake Jake very smartly running away and staying out of those side B ranges because dot damage is so important in this matchup oh, too. Sure. And not only that, but you know, he's also burning the timer on Arsene. He's making sure that uh, Sharp has a little bit more difficulty playing. More evasive, but okay, get over here. Let's continue this close combat that we had uh, throughout pretty much this game three. And even right there, baited the fact that it looked like you could punish him there, but he still had a jump available, baiting out the forward smash. This Joker switch is putting in the correct amount of numbers right now. It just baits him to run in again, forces him off stage. Exactly. Sharp is looking so good, does not get the forward smash though. But the cross up back here, that was so sick. He dragged down forward air. But okay, just a little bit of panic from Jake. You saw him come out swinging, and you know what? That's actually a big tell to Sharp. Like Jake, whenever he's put in those those panic situations, he's gonna hit the button. He's gonna hit a button and try and attack. And the forward tilt, that's gonna take it. Speaking of which, 81%, and you died to forward smash, and that was uncharged as well. That's that KO Oof. power. Look at this. He was looking for the air dodge too. Jake's starting to find an opening. Only 26% on him, but Sharp has to find a KO relatively soon because right now the, the the damage is in Jake's favor if he finds the openings. That's for true. That's for true. Okay, getting a little bit, getting chipped out a little bit. But you know what? Arsene's here. Bro's here. He's got direct <laughs> all fall to that charge that smash, whatever you do. <laughs> I, that would be so, I, I don't want to say disappointing, but man, that would be, that would be a, a, a sad way to go. Oh, there you go. Finally finds the forward air on the landing. Honestly, yeah, no, that, that could have been the moment to steal the game away. 61% with the forward smash charge. We have already saw that 81% were rage before. Took a KO out at almost the exact same position. So even if he didn't get the KO, like Sharp would have been deep in the blast zone. Good job from Sharp taking that W. And but you know what, Ajax? Now it's on Jake uh, to pick the stage from here on out for the rest of the set. 
True story so has up. We're probably going to get some platforms. If think, anything, uh, we may go back to uh, Town and City. I was about to say, I think Town and City is pretty high on the table because, you know, Jake proved that that stage worked very well before. But there is the FD aspect of it, which just worked tremendously for Sharp. Oh, but very surprisingly, we're actually back here on Battlefield. I know this is a good stage for Joker as well. You have the, you know, the platform drag downs and stuff. But this does re-put those minecarts off of the, pl of the platforms back online. Yeah, and that's really what was giving Sharp a lot of trouble, like, earlier in the set. You know, Sharp just got hit by so many minecarts uh, whenever he was playing Corrin. Yeah, it's just like every time you try to go in, Ian with Sephiroth too, even with that range, he still got beat out. Sharp is going to have to preemptively call a lot of jumps, but Jake is actually answering that by staying incredibly grounded right now. Mm -hmm. Staying incredibly grounded, maintaining these anti-air hitboxes that have been putting Sharp away from him and just racking up enough damage on Sharp where Arsene's come out. And now Jake is able to avoid and really dismantle this Arsene that Sharp has. And it's going to be in a pretty situation, but unfortunately <laughs> for Jake, he got hit with that back air in the middle of the cart. Yeah, there it is, that preemptive jump call, knowing that Jake wanted out of that corner pretty bad. And even with that minecart, you can't beat the Arsene back here. But this is a good follow-up here. What's he going to do about the approach from Sharp? And decides to just back off. I, I respect that entirely. Okay, okay another minecart, but Sharp is able to maintain this stock. And if he's able to put, like, an additional 40%, or you know what? Forget the percent. Let's just get Arsene out here now. You know what? I'm going to need... I'm really going to need the stat ratio on how many grabs Jake's land, like Jake lands. He conditions people into shield like nobody's business uh, you got the minecart you have the like the quick hits from all of his normals but man does he get a lot a lot of like a whole lot of grabs and it's been working incredibly throughout all the sets i mean just think about the tool set that enderman has at his disposal he literally has something that can Mike. grab you while you're in shield and if you're like if you're saying in shield a little bit too much guess what you got the minecart yeah and then you have the walk up up tilt pressure if you decide to like this team right there he's doing it right there because he's assuming he might have spot dodged with how many grabs he's done especially up against the platform uh or against the ledge and the extended hitbox actually coming through but it doesn't give him enough time to get away mm -hmm. okay but this is where jake needs to be a little bit more careful you know he's sitting at 74 percent not exactly a kill percent just yet but our scent is almost here that bar is almost full and now that you're approaching close to 100 in the hundreds you are definitely in the danger zone yeah, facts. Oh, I like the attempt, but doesn't get the tech chase with the down smash. That's pretty important, but still only 44%. Not too bad. I definitely want to see, like, even though he's at 114, if... Oh, never mind. Arsene's back. I was about to say, if yeah, he can Arsene find another Don't forget about Arsene, beat. man. He shows up <laughs> yeah. at the bar. He comes, he comes to collect. Yeah, fact, like I said, he's like, boy, my man, I need help. <laughs> I'm getting jumped by minecarts, by axes, <laughs> by TNTs. Come help me. Look at how far that still sends him off of that back air. Yeah, this low quality character is definitely giving me trouble and I need backup for sure. Barsen is out, you know, he'll be back later and whoa! I think the wall actually saved Sharp. I was gonna say, at first I thought that that might screw Sharp up a bit because he got sent so far to the left even off the untackable, but it actually helped him out. Look at Jake preemptively knowing he's gonna roll right there and then sets him up again with a potential minecart. And everybody is swinging and swinging oh, and looking for, sure. for the KO. And that's what I was talking about earlier in the set, like whenever Jake's in like a... Uh, a panic situation he likes to swing and as you can see he was just swinging for the fences he was able to land one so he's picking up the sock but still jake not gonna be able to make it back just getting clipped a little bit too low with the gun yeah good job by uh sharp not giving up the fact that he wanted to go for that gun pressure right there even with the gold on deck look how much damage he got 36 percent off the opening here i like sharp's opening just running straight in keep that pressure up you got to keep it up if you want to keep the sharp believers alive in chat i know a lot of people are sweating bullets because there are a whole lot there's a whole lot of points potentially on this set for people who chose sharp preemptively <laughs> y'all forgot jake has been winning a few tournaments this week including hey. <laughs> msm earlier the week Jake's already a champion, so this guy's already got titles under his own belt. But Jake, still putting up the walls, forcing. Look at that. He tried to force Sharp to approach from the air and had the anti-air ready. He had it ready. Sharp was also prepared to off the wall bounce to go for Forder. He missed it, but Sharp evolving right now. Oh, that is uh, that's so detrimental to Sharp right now. Losing Arsene at that point, especially when he was starting to keep pressure up. Now, <gasps> he's still caught him that with down smash. Out smash is stupid. Okay, trading tra minecart for Aha. Did we? Did he get the upgrade off? I didn't see it. No, but he's still. I mean, even without it, like there it is. That's still plenty strong. It doesn't KO, but if it was a gold oh, no. or a diamond, oh no, no it's definitely gonna KO. 
and just with a little bit of percent, Arson's gonna be back. We actually have a, we, he's here. Arson's gonna be here. The boy is around the corner. There it is. The back airs could potentially get the KO. He's not gonna do it yet, but Jake has to choose the right option. He's gonna force to recover pretty low. What's the chase? He looks for a couple back airs, forces him back off with Nair as well. Oh, and of course, just another back air sending Jake the opposite what? direction. Trying to catch with the Nair, doesn't catch it, but the forward tilt with the arson assist, still not enough. It's not going to do it yet. Jake has to be careful and get up here. He's trying to find a grab, oh, but he misses God. the grab, and F-Tilt's going to take it. Sharp, once again, freaking threading the needle on that kill percent to get it to game number five. What was I saying? That, that game... While it was in Jake's favor and it was in his momentum, the moment that Arsene came back, it became even. It is... That was so crucial. And you saw that Sharp started to play to that manner too. He realized, oh, I am really, really close to Arsene right now. He played safe, kept it simple, didn't overcommit because he knew all of a sudden, once that came there, Jake doesn't have that same preemptive uh, play where he can just not fear trading with his forward smash. You trade bad with that Arsene, you lose. And that you could see that played into Jake's mindset at the end there. That's right. It's incredible. Wow. <laughs> incredible indeed. And, yeah, and, and before, like, this is... What a way to close it for us tonight because we'll be having a switch after this. This is the final set of the night for us before we switch off tonight. We're closing it with one of the best ones we've seen all night. Game number five, Sharp versus Jake. Sharp believers in chat drop a one. Jake believers drop a two. We're getting into it, running it back to Battlefield. Okay. I mean, it's, yeah, like you were saying, if we were going to have one last set, I'm happy it's this one. I love End Morning. I love Frog. But guess what? This this is so hot. This is the first, like, game five that we had an opportunity to really have on stream. And, of course, we have it. And look at that. No surprise is the way that these two players, starting out so even, percents are just mere integers away. Yeah, it's just so close. Like, and, uh, you know, you could see Sharp is honest. Like, he's understood. I have to find my openings while he doesn't have the best resources. I'll take a bit of damage, possibly. But look, he's he's baiting out these jumps and these swings a lot. He's he, he just consistently staying away with the F tilt. And I know, you, I know you're a big fan of the music of the stage, Ajax. How yeah, do you feel this about this track better. for the final game? This is game five. <laughs> this is this is a whole lot better for the moment. And there we go. Catches the high side B as well. Arsene coming through at the last second. This is that type of final boss uh, music that you want for this type of situation here. Oh, and you can tell as Sharp is just feeling and he is definitely vibing with the song as he, again, continues to throw out empty hops. Sharp checking Jake's shield with Nair. And you know what? Honestly, if he's able to get off this ledge, I think we're going to see a little bit more. Yeah, more, more checks. Check him again. Yeah, is he Jake trying to change up the pace now? He's actually swinging a bit more instead of trying to go for a bit more camping pressure. Right now, he is just because he's got stage position and it's not like smart to approach him. But he's finding these openings a bit more now with these minecarts, which is huge. And he okay. gets the diamond on deck. Not only is he walking well with the stock, but he's only taking 5%. That's right, diamonds are your friend, and guess what? Jake's gonna try and use his friend as much as he can. Gets the tipper of that F smash, and now, just like that, even stocks. That range is deceptive. I did not think that was gonna hit. I don't think Sharp thought it was gonna either. And still though, that whip grab, it's been costing Jake quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's been doing great all day. I did say before, I want that, I want that grab percentage out of Jake, but those whip yeah. grabs are really costing him. Like, cause Sharp just recognizing where they are. His grounded back airs are also coming in clutch for Jake too. It's really like putting his opponent right in front of him and it's allowing him to follow up. But Arsene, we've seen how Sharp has been able to utilize Arsene to his advantage. He's stolen games with this <gasps> character. And wow, that was so dangerous. And Jake is able to escape with his life. Not only does he escape, but he retakes stage control. Setting up Sharp to again, uh, possibly like try and approach with the air. And you know Jake is ready with his up smash. Oh my god, and that backer comes in. Tri like, this match actually might be determined heavily by the fact that Sharp didn't pull the trigger on that up smash after baiting the air dodge out before. If he can't find, a, like, an early kill here and get Arsene prepped for the last stock, this actually could go in favor of Jake. But Sharp still trying to push oh, initiative no. and gets grabbed. That's right. Just momentum, Jake, for sure. He just, okay, Arsene is back. Sharp has to delete this stock immediately. Get yes. more back airs, more ledge pressure. Oh, that was the air dodge, but what a reversal from Jake. Able to make it back to the ground, throw up an up tilt over the zone. And now he is swinging once again. Sharp already approaching triple digits. And Sharp missing the opportunity on that beat out before and it gets hit on the anti with the up smash again. Jake clutches it out, figures out what it was going on and takes it in game number five here in winner's semis. 
over Sharp. What an incredible game between these two.